and welcome. Uh, this session uh, moderator is right now not here, but uh, I can just tell you the intentions of this uh, uh, this session uh, that he actually wanted to uh, tell you. That is uh, doing turning from a refractive cataract surgeon to a refractive surgeon purely was what he wanted to impress that uh, a person uh, nowadays who is doing cataract needs to also uh, become good at refractive surgeon because that is the need of the hour now. So not wasting any more time. My topic is do your basics right, patient selection, choosing eye wells and proper insertions in cataract surgery. And uh, it's a vast topic. I don't know if I can do justice to it, but then I'll try. Need, technology and reality. Cataract surgery is a refractive surgery. No distinction between refractive surgeons and cataract surgeons. The reason is because now our eye wells are not just for vision, but uh, to carry on multitasking and I call them lifestyle eye wells. Patients' expectations that they would see everything at all distances without loss of any contrast sensitivity and without any post-operative complications. So that's it, uh, eye well that would suit all their needs and we have the market flooded with premium eye wells and it continues to research and development continues, it continues to grow but the truth is there's no definitive eye well which would suit all surgeons and all patients. So we need to actually make our own structure and find out the best in our hands and best for our patients. And we have to remember that with the same treatment, two different patients might have variable response. And the reality is to narrow down on the patient, the eye well, and the company or technology we actually believe in and we are good at. So in patient selection, the first thing that we do is chair, uh, give more chair time to understand the personality of the patient, the need of the patient, and have to, ex not just the need, but how have to match his work. A patient who is driving cannot be given a multifocal without explaining that he would be having glares and halos. Uh, what he actually needs, unaided or aided vision, you have to understand that the health of the eye, you have to understand there's no nirvana. You cannot have perfect lens, perfect operation in the way that we actually have had in our natural lens. That has not, so we should undersell that, but again, not just uh, over, uh, we should not just, uh, because of that, we should not avoid excellent operations uh, which are giving good results with refractive lenses. The projection of our confidence is what the patient chooses from and we better choose an optimistic patient who is realistic and is not very exacting type, uh, especially for premium eye wells like multifocals. Going for eye wheel choice, again, the patient's perspective is the most important, the work, the ocular conditions, uh, angle kappa, which is very important. We have to remember that and the standard assessment test helps us like visual acuity refraction, topography, biometry, and Shermer test for dry eye, which is very, very important because even after a very good surgery, a dry eye would give you a big headache. From the surgeon's perspective, the technology you believe in, the technology which works best in your hands, and there are lots of lenses, monofocal, multifocal, accommodating. So you choose your lens correctly according to the incisions that you make, the sphericity, the toric corrections, Final choice is yours on literature search by the mentors, what have they uh, taught you, uh, your wisdom and your experience. Some diseases like corneal and uveitis, we better avoid very premium lenses like multifocals and because of the higher order refraction, these patients might still have problem even after multifocal. So I usually exclude them and put them on a spheric monofocal lenses. I explain that you might have a corneal edema or need a keratoplasty later on even after a good surgery. And uh, when the ciliary muscle is diseased, like ca uh, cases of synechia or uh, inflammation which develops from uveitis or advanced diabetes, I better avoid a premium lens. And of course, a spheric monofocal lens is very good because it. Uh, uh, we have to, of course, uh, tell the patient that they are not complete uh, contraindications, but we have to tell the patients that these lenses would create problem. So good for uh, a spheric monofocal lens. For retinal issues, again, which we confirm by OCT, uh, multifocal lens is avoided because a perfect macula and neurological system is required to counteract the aberrations which are produced by the multifocal lenses. And uh, also in glaucoma, the same rule is followed. 
because the contrast sensitivity is lost a little bit by the these lenses a monofocal optic will maintain the maximum quality of vision here astigmatism we all know greater than 1.5 we opt for a toric lens monofocal or multifocal some of the pearls are are very accurate biometry i do it on optical and immersion if possible do it on the day when i'm not doing any procedure in the eye and ask them to avoid contact lenses at least 2 weeks before i do the measurement especially for premium lenses high corneal astigmatism we have to explain that they might need a laser top up at a later date so uh, this is a this is i did a slit lamp marking now i have switched over to slit lamp marking the different ways of marking with markers and different other systems it's in the app or uh, there's image guidance system on table i prefer to do a slit lamp marking pre operatively because on table there is a cyclo rotation so especially the horizontal axis is marked very well so this is it this was marked in slit lamp the horizontal axis and reconfirmed on the table the 0180 i prefer a, a temporal incision and uh, i just reconfirm it and this uh, place, uh, lens had to be put at 90 degree so i was fortunate and uh, once the surgery was over then uh, this is how the lens was pushed Uh, this was put under irrigation i've switched over to irrig lens insertion in irrigation nowadays and i maintain that uh, irrigation cannula like a ac maintainer till the time i actually position my lens and finish my hydro so this is a tip that uh, avoids the collapse of the ac after you have positioned your lenses of course the image guidance systems are a big relief uh, if you have it once you position the lens on the table this is how the callisto or varion they help you to position the lens properly so again when you're doing a multifocal i would just uh, share some few tips i always load them myself this is a uh, multifocal and uh, about the uh, leading haptic i don't know but the trailing haptic i always put it on the optic and under my microscope i load these lenses and just let them go just behind the tip of the injector i inflate the bag completely and this is a beautiful round rexes that you actually have to have a good rexes for any premium eye wells and engage the uh, injector tip in the wound and i use a spatula in this cases to just tuck the lens in and always my leading haptic i of course try not always is in the bag and i try to dial the trailing haptic this is a tip which i would like to share and uh, also the matching of the perkinjit images by uh, by look, asking the patient to look at the light if it is in topical thorough ac wash is a important step that we should do uh, uh, viscoelastic not only cause inflammation but can also disturb the position of your lens this is a tip that i sometimes would like to share that i put a cannula separately below the lens to wash out the viscoelastic behind and this is a, a normal insertion and i would like to share this pearl here that when you sometimes are in a hurry in a irrigation especially when you are doing irrigation do not leave your lens at the wound this is what i have felt is very important if you are in a hurry to withdraw your plunger this is what happens it gets engaged and then it's very difficult and this is what can happen also you might while dialing be flipping the lens upside down and all the sphericity goes fortunately for me the haptic got caught in the wound so i could dial it back and so this is one tip that uh, when you're doing irrigation deliver the trailing haptic inside the ac uh this is one tip for a multi piece i will i usually try to have a bigger wound uh not the outer portion of course inflating the bag is important and the bigger wound is this has uh, the inner portion of the wound i enter with my keratome the inner portion i enlarge a bit because here you have actually have to screw them in rather than pushing them in and while screwing it it's good that you put the tip slightly inside the anterior chamber not just at the wound and let your uh, leading haptic actually go inside the bag so that makes your life easier and delivering it on the irish the trailing haptic you can dial it very easily a tip uh, regarding the when you're using a pupil expander like a hook or a behex you might want to use a spatula i use a spatula to tap the lens in so that it does not get engaged with the expanders so that's it and 
so however difficult life may seem there is always something that you can do to succeed patient selection informed consent and realistic expectations are parameters for successful post op results i welcome you all to the aioc 2024 kolkata and the registrations of that are open kindly visit hangar c get yourself registered because till 14th of may you will be having a discount so kindly come and you're welcome to the city of joy next year thank